I was thinking I'm going to share some of my thoughts with you on overwhelm and how I've learned to deal with it and just my thoughts. Um, I, I think we're all just going so fast, right? Our lives. We multitask like there's an award, right? For who can accomplish the most in the least amount of time. There's this perpetual tug of war inside of us where we really want to meet all these responsibilities and commitments that we have, but at the same time we want to feel like we're making the most of it. We're maximizing our time and our days, but we don't. We, we feel drained, right? We're harried. It doesn't feel like we're living our life. It feels like we're... Uh, running around in circles or like whizzing through it and um, I don't know I guess there's this there's this sense that if we don't cram in as much as possible something's gonna pass us by like we're gonna miss out on there's something something you know what it is it's our life that's what we are chasing after our everyday life. And the irony, in my opinion, is that in modern day life, we've come up with so many gadgets, so many inventions to create time. I mean, just think of uh, uh, a washer that does their laundry, right? <laughs> that frees up time. Um, I'm not even gonna go into it. You know all of, all of these things, everything we buy is because it's going to save us time. It's going to free up time. I don't have to waste my time this way anymore. And it does. It does free up time. And we fill that time over and over again. We fill it with many, many things. One, there are many responsibilities and commitments one can choose to take on or one has chosen to take on. If you have a family, I don't have kids. I'm not married, so I don't have that commitment um, and so you know there's a very big real set of, of, of responsibilities that will fill your time up but at the end of the day we all have our own time you know somewhere after the number of hours you need to sleep to survive and the hours of work and the basics of, of living like you know shower you gotta eat you gotta these things there still is that leftover time and what we do with it is up to us but it's so easy to get caught up in this um, I don't know what you call it down the rabbit hole <clears throat> and I would say we end up in overwhelm we end up overwhelmed because we're putting so much on our plate we want to feel busy we want to feel uh, engage. We want to feel productive. I don't know. I don't always want to feel productive. <laughs> just, just saying. I like to just chill <sighs> at times. Um, that um, you know, it's not just our outer lives that have become go go go. It's also the inner, and that's where the overwhelm really shows up. And overwhelm really means you're inundated. You're flooded. You feel like everything is too much it's just like it feels unsustainable like there's more on your plate than you can technically do or you've agreed to do and uh, guess what you're right <laughs> that's why you feel like that and overwhelm shows up to tell you you know you might want to reconsider I'm not saying it's easy so so when you are in that place, that place of overwhelm, for me, I'm paralyzed. I'm so stressed and anxious, and it's this low-level anxiety in here. And, and and I'm like, okay, okay, I got I got all these things I gotta do. Okay, I, I can do this. Wait, let me just get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get organized. I'm gonna think about it. Okay. And I'm so hyper, on, you know, maybe not outwardly looking, but in inside of me, and so worried and concerned about what do I do first what do I do second it feels like no matter where I start 
it's going to be the wrong place to start because all of these things take precedence. They all are important. And so when you are in this place of you feel like you're doing everything you can and yet you're literally paralyzed with inaction, um, it's hard to get out of that place. That's what I want to talk about. How do you get out of that place? Because when I have been in that place, I'll be like, I know I have experienced wonderful moments before, but how do I get there? How? I can't get out of this hell. And it's taken years and years and years. But I finally came to a realization. Well, one of many. First one was the need for outer. So there's so much, when you're in overwhelm, there's inner chaos. There's inner noise, crowding, and action. And so you're not going to be able to calm the inside. You're not going to be able to sort of, all right, let's, let's realign. Unless your exterior, you need to start from the outside. Again, this is my personal um, approach. You know, if you're in a place where you're, it's highly stimulated, lots of noises, lots of lights, lots of things flashing, going, people, yada, yada, I, I'll strongly bet that you, it's really hard to center yourself, unless you're really, you know, good yogi. Um, and I began to realize that when I'm in nature, even a little bit, even a few minutes, um, there was a switch. There was something that sort of suspended time for me. It was like I would see the full moon and uh, not expecting it. And I'd be like, oh, that's, oh, that's so beautiful. And so in that moment, there was no overwhelm. There was no thought of my life. It put my life in perspective. It's like, oh, yeah, the moon, it's been there all along. Even when I was inside worried. Da, 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 da. It's still it's still there right now as we speak. We only notice it when when there's time for it, right? Okay, I'm not stressed. Oh yes, it's beautiful. But I start to see that it's important to look at these things when we're stressed, to look for them, I would even say. So I started to actually um, look for the moon rise and sunset and go outside specifically at these times because I would get that feeling of, oh, that is beautiful, oh my God, it's, you know, we, we even say in our language, such a breath of fresh air, that's how we feel, because we're getting it. So I started to realize it was the outer silence, stillness, in nature, we're talking nature here, we're not talking downtown, city, right, streetcars, honking, all that stuff, although you can find nature there too, really. So I started to notice, okay, I need relative stillness around me, space, and quiet. And then it became a little easier to get closer to the inside of me. I, and so I started to notice, I'm like, okay, what else um, allows me to suspend my attention, you know, takes me out of that intense overwhelm, even if it's for a minute or a moment, I started to notice. And I started to notice it, when uh, I had started doing art classes. Oh, I love my art classes. And um, it was when I'm literally, you know, mixing the paint colors. And you can see like the red paint and the white paint and you swirl it and you start to see the pink or the, the shades. And then the, you know, um, if I'm drawing something, you know, you focus on trying to recreate. And there was no ability to think about the things that were um, stressing me out. So by the end of my art class, no matter what mood I would have gone in with, I would always leave in a calmer state. So I was noticing that art, anything I'd say right brain that, that started to take my attention would calm my brain down because it couldn't, couldn't do that. But, but first I needed the outer, then a little artistic stuff. Then I start to notice my senses, our five senses. So, you know, you inhale 
a rose. <laughs> I'm laughing, you know why? What, what's the saying? Like, you gotta stop and smell the roses? <laughs> that came from somewhere, people. Literally. The real rose, right? The one that smells, not the ones that don't smell. I'm talking about the ones that smell. Um, or something else. Lavender. Um, peppermint tea. Oh, inhale it. It's that, for that moment. Um, or coffee. Oh, I love coffee. Oh. At nighttime, I can't wait for the morning for my coffee. And it's the, well, okay, let's not go off on the tangent with coffee now. But I mean, I started to notice that it was the beautiful uh, scenery in nature, right? My eyes, what I see, it's um, music. You can be something you hear, you know, mu uh, birds, uh, water running, right? You're, what you hear. So it was my five senses. I was like, hey, yeah, we're not just the brain. Um, as I indulge the five senses and really pay attention, it shifted me out of my thinking brain, the, the, the rational, <laughs> stressed out brain. And so I started to do these things intentionally. And then I would find myself in a calmer place where I can actually look at what do I want in my life? And how do I make choices from there? Because I end up in overwhelm by reacting, knee-jerk reactions. Um, and answering in the moment and, and saying yes to something that perhaps I didn't sit to think about and um, just not having to have reflected enough on what I want my day-to-day -day life to look on, at, like and then making uh, conscious choices to say no to some things and to say yes to others because you have to say no to some things. We only have so much time. Um, and this is how I began. And I'm telling you people, it's, it's a simple set of concept, I suppose. You know, it can be challenging to do, meaning many people would consider my approach a waste of time. I don't have time to sit in the, smell the roses, you idiot. <laughs> I can totally hear someone saying that. Um, but I say you don't have time to not. It's your life. That's all we have, people. All we can be assured of is this moment. We're not even sure of this day. We don't know how it's going to end. That's not a pessimistic way that of thinking. I'm just saying this moment I'm alive, this is the best of days and the worst of days. This is everything. And the older you get, the more you probably have come in contact with seeing that that's true as tragedies befall you or those around you or um, people close to you that you never thought would pass away or become ill, um, that happens. And you start to see that, you know, you just don't know you know, your life can change in a millisecond. Change forever in a millisecond. So, you can't afford to not slow down. Well, you can, and then be miserable. Or, you can slow down and be happy like me. And now, I make a living out of helping people slow down. Who would have thought that's a career? But it is, right? We're so crazy that we need to be retaught how to connect with nature. And um, I think I'm gonna stop there. Feel free to share your thoughts and uh, let me know if you like what I said. Oh, little squirrel, it's a little squirrel, uh, sorry, on my balcony. Hi, baby. Um, see, cute little moment, you know, just, uh, okay, enough time on the clock here. I hope you enjoyed some of this. If you like it, tell me. If you kind of disagree with some of the stuff, tell me. I'm curious to see where you disagree 
and uh, just don't be mean. All right. Toodaloo.